What up, y'all? We are here for our weekly romance oracle reading. Ooh, love message. Let's check in to see what would most benefit us this week as it pertains to our love lives. Where should we put our focus to set us up for the greatest success in this upcoming new cycle? Release your ex. The time has come to clear your energy. So I am really feeling this. I feel like through Aquarius season and Pisces season, we are doubling down to purge and really release the last timeline so that we can fully jump onto this one. Think about the term jumping timelines. You can't keep one foot in the past and one foot in the future. Think about the Old Testament story of Lot and his family. When they had to escape Sodom and Gomorrah and the city was being destroyed, uh, they were told, run away and don't look back, no matter what you do. Uh, and what happened was that Lot's wife, like she was from Sodom and Gomorrah, so she had roots there, she had attachments to the place. And so she stopped and looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Well, if you think about that metaphorically, it's like when we turn back and continue to put our focus on our attachments that are no longer, that are the towers that have crashed, that we can't, we have to go forward. We can't sit there and focus on the past or else we will be frozen in time and we will become bitter and rigid. And so, you know, the time has come, we need to purge. We need to fully jump timelines onto this new cycle and if people from the past are meant to come back around maybe they will but it has to be under dramatically different circumstances right and so you have to completely cut ties and completely move on and as with no intention of going backward and then that has to be a new situation that's presented on the terms of the new cycle right because we need to choose and curate this brand new story. We don't want pieces of the story lingering on just because it's always been there or it was there before or it's familiar. We need to be living fully authentically and on purpose. And we are having an up level and we're stepping into that up level. And so, you know, part of this transition is feeling the turbulence of leaving what was behind. And, you know, this week, it's like attachment styles have been coming up a lot, like deep unconscious patterning has been coming up a lot. <coughs> Recognizing these, you know, uh, hidden things that aren't in our awareness or wounds or core wounds or shadow aspects, um, inner conflicting desires from the past that are preventing us from fully moving forward. And maybe there's something about the ex-relationships that had patterns that you haven't fully like put the threads together and so we need to do that so that we can fully release them we need to purge any stale grief that wasn't expressed and do it to the point where you're just like oh it's out of my system i'm over it i'm i'm repulsed by myself at this point it's grotesque you know like my my best friend who is passed on now but i remember one time i just could not shake this person out of my um, out of my energy, out of my heart, out of my aura. And he was like, you need to wash that man right out of your hair tricks. And he was like, how long do you need to fully wallow in this sorrow <laughs> to really get it out of your system? And I was like, I don't know, like probably at the most a long weekend, but it probably turned into just a few hours. So sometimes we just haven't fully recognized and witnessed this for ourselves yet. And so we need to pay ourselves the homage to, you know, witness, okay, what, what lessons are we taking? What stories remain though that left core wounds that are unconsciously informing our perceptions or our assumptions that are perpetuating <coughs> certain reactive uh, behavioral thought and emotional patterns now. We don't want to run the risk of bringing these into the new cycle, into new relationships, right? You know, I think it's it's worth mentioning that just because we're starting a new cycle doesn't mean that it's going to be different. You know, I think people are like, they hear the word, oh, we're starting a new cycle. You know, they hear these words and they think, oh, everything's going to be different this time. 
And honestly, it won't be different unless you consciously make an effort to do something differently. If you continue to sort of do things the same way that you have done, then everything's going to pretty much erupt and implode the same way it always has. So, you know, it's not just about, oh, this is a new cycle, things are gonna be better. It's like, it, it has potential for, for things to be better if we do things differently. Sorry, I've been like having a little cold the last day or so. All right, so we need to release the past because we can't bring in the new or, you know, really fully lend ourselves to new and new people. If we still have prominent energy, like hanging around our, our uh, aura, like people can sense it. If you're, if you're hung up on something or if you're like energetically tied in some way to a situation or a person, it's like you're not really open and we need to open. So we need to like cut cords, release exes, do all that. Separation. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. So it's like, again, reinforcing like things that are, you know, finished and complete. It's like be willing to allow things to change that want to change and allow endings that need to end to end. And, you know, stop forcing it to, to be, you know, something that it's not. Or, you know, stop trying to control it. And, uh, or, or just avoid facing something because you think it means something about yourself. It doesn't. It's just, but yeah, definitely something here about releasing the past, letting something be gone, separating yourself from it. <coughs> Excuse me. Children, your love life is being affected by children. This could be literal, but I usually like to read this from a sense of it's time to do inner child healing. So what we were talking about like the core wound that probably is lingering from ex relationships is tied to core wounds that your inner child still has from childhood. Like, um, I am inadequate and my needs don't matter, you know, and that perpetuates in relationships, right? If you're with a partner who makes you feel like you're always catering to them and you're inadequate and your needs don't matter, it's like, oh, that echoes, it echoes. And then it's like you you have these unconscious beliefs about yourself, even in your conscious mind. If you're like, no, this isn't true about me, it doesn't matter because the subconscious, the unconscious has this virus in its operating system. And that's really, you know, making the most effect on the situation. It's it has more power than our conscious mind. Like our willpower almost cannot over overpower our unconscious and our subconscious because they'll arrange things in covert ways. It's really weird. So healing the inner child is going to also help us uh, recognize and like resolve and reconcile our attachment styles. And, you know, like, like we're all on a, on a spectrum of attachment styles and codependency and all of these things. And so it's like, we've been trying to heal all of these things. <coughs> One of the, the focuses of doing that, that will, that will probably alleviate so much of it. The core root work to do is healing the inner child because the inner child is acting out and making decisions um, and if your inner child is making the decisions that's running your life and it's the wounded inner child, then you're going to be making, you know, unhealthy choices. And then our last card is flirt, extend your lighthearted energy to others. So yeah, it's like, you know, let go of what's not working, heal the inner child and let yourself lighten up and have a good time. <coughs> Put yourself out there into the world, entertain other options. Um, you know, not if you're in a relationship, I'm not telling you to go outside of your relationship, but I'm just saying like, if you are, you know, single and you wanted a, a shift and a change in energy, it's like, maybe you need to really purge, let go of the past and then just give yourself like a coming out party night out where you're just like, all right, this is me. I'm coming back out into the scene and I'm going to change my energy. Things are getting stagnant, you know, and, and after a big purge, you just feel so, so light. So lean in, extend your energy to others, you know, open up, open your heart chakra and make sure you're not like resting bitch face everywhere you go. <coughs> make a conscious effort 
to open up your body language and things. <coughs> okay, let's get a, a little clarity on release your ex. Uh, throat chakra. So being like real and honest with yourself about what what happened, and maybe if you have to, to do like a proactive confrontation exercise in a meditative like state, to go back and in the meditation on a soul level, say to your ex the things that you need to, that you need to, to take up for yourself, that you need to feel expressed. <coughs> so many times, just voicing this out loud to ourselves and us giving ourselves the attention and the compassion and the, and the, and the patient ear that we wish that other people would is where we need to start. Because the relationship that we have with others is going to reflect the relationship we have with ourselves. So releasing our ex. You know, maybe you need to journal. Maybe you need to talk out loud to yourself. Um, you know, maybe you need to speak out loud to the creator. Maybe you need to actually speak to your ex and have, you know, uh, a conversation. Um, I think it's always great if you can give yourself the closure and you don't need it from somebody else because they can give it to you and you still won't, it still won't satisfy, it still won't satiate. <coughs> but maybe there is, you know, more that, that needs to be discussed before <coughs> you can fully move forward. You'll have to decide that for yourself. Embrace. So under separation, time apart for your partners on the horizon, the world card is the ending and beginning. So this is the timeline jump. It's like separate from the old timeline. Um, if you're in a committed relationship and this is not re resonating, then like it's not for you. But if you're looking for like a shift in your love life, if you're in a relationship, then maybe, you know, it can be the end of your old, you know, dynamics and the beginning of, you know, a renewal. But for this reading, it's really looking like it's about cutting ties with the past, whether or not we have been separated from someone for a while and they're just still lingering in our mind, <coughs> if this is new or fresh or whatever. But I think it's like really cutting ties, letting the past go, but really fully understanding what we're taking away from it, the wisdom, like the in, insight, the discernment. What did we learn about ourselves? This is not just what we learned about other people and oh, now we can really identify a narcissist and protect ourselves from these kinds of blah, blah, blahs. No, what, I mean, yeah, sure, that's part of it. But what did you learn about yourself? What gaps do you need to close so that you don't fall prey to being in another relationship with a narcissist next, right? So we can't avoid ourselves by constantly pointing at everyone else. It's not to say that they don't have their own stuff that they are accountable for and guilty of, but <coughs> when it's all said and done, we are only in charge of like growing and evolving and healing ourselves. So the point of reflecting after, you know, something like that, reflecting on our relationships is how did I show up? What were my actions? What was my consciousness? And how can I improve upon that for next time? All right, children. What do we need to know about children? A well-deserved reward. So nine of wands. Nine of wands is overcoming a pattern. <coughs> Finally breaking a habit. It's like conquering this spiritual challenge, right? And and I think it's when you I feel like you're you're at the end of your rope, even and you're so tired, but it's like no, persist and that determination and that persistence gets you over the hump of the nines, like in, numer in numerology, like the nines are completion and the 10 is an overflow. So at the point of a nine of wands, it's like the wand suit is about fire. It's about spirit. It's about our self-esteem and our self-worth and our self-identity. And also it reflects our career and our, uh, our in, in, uh, ingenuity and our kind of entrepreneurial, you know, dreams and goals. So it's, you know, the nine of wands with this, you know, inner child work. It's like, 
you're really seeing how your inner child has been affecting your love life. Now that you can witness these patterns, you can go back and, and do the inner child healing. And there's, you know, books on this. There's To Be Magnetic. You can go into their, like, website and they have specific um, workshops just built to do the inner child work. So I always have my affiliate link to the To Be Magnetic website down below in my description box. And I think that I, it's a 15% off coupon on your monthly membership. <coughs> But I never regret having that. It's always so helpful because, you know, we're talking about it's the subconscious that's driving all of these things. And you can't consciously overcome these things. <coughs> not with willpower alone. Like, you can consciously overcome it. But it's not with willpower alone. You have to, like, intentionally rewrite your subconscious. And it takes being in, you know, consistent states where your subconscious is impressionable. And you can do this over a period of time, but it's really like amazing when you can find concentrated work that's specifically targeted towards your subconscious. And that's the whole point of To Be Magnetic. It's like rewriting the subconscious, healing your nervous system, healing your trauma responses, deepening your self-worth, and increasing your magnetism so that you have like the confidence to, you know, like fulfill and manifest your potential, but also manifest your desires. And so, you know, going into the workshop and doing the DIs, the deep imaginings, um, it really helps rewrite that subconscious um, and uh, help you get over those blocks. There's also, um, you know, plenty of experts online. You, you do a search and you'll find someone that you resonate with. But be careful because there's just a lot of charlatans out there these days and, you know, lots of people just you know, talking, you know, it's a bunch of noise. So find someone that you feel like you truly resonate with, with their voice. <coughs> They're legit. Find experts. All right. Daydreams and decisions. So flirt and seven of cups. So this is like in a, in a positive high octave energy flirt with seven of cups is like, okay, <coughs> move on from the past of what is like a dead end that's not going anywhere, things that have no potential, that aren't serving you, that aren't equally yoked, that aren't reciprocal, and start exploring new options. Start imagining, okay, what are what would be you, the essence of your ideal relationship? Think of the essences of your ideal partner. You know, um, don't be so uh, caught up in the... the um, the superficial things. I mean, those things matter, but really get into the essence of someone. Who is this person going to be? What are they going to be like? And, you know, you get more of an idea of like really what's resonate, like what resonates with you authentically, right? Think about your core needs in a relationship. You need those met. So you want that person to have those qualities. What are your deal breakers? right? What are you not willing to tolerate in a person or in a partnership, right? Get clear on those. Um, what are your like preferences? What would make someone compatible with you? Think about it. Like, how do you like spending your days? Um, you know, when we like some people, but they're not compatible with us and we try to like pursue a relationship anyway, it usually ends up kind of unraveling because like the lifestyle just doesn't, it's not in alignment. <coughs> so you want to find someone who's compatible with your love vision, with your, what you want, right? With your love, love goals. So get clear on that. Dream about that and get into that feeling state. Don't think about a specific person that violates their free will. And it pigeonholes you into getting really like attached to a specific outcome. And that creates resistance. So it's more important to get focused on the qualities of this person without thinking it has to be a specific individual. And there's a lot of people on the internet trying to teach you how to manifest a specific person. And it's like, there's even like a shorthand, like people are like manifesting your SP. It's like, no, that's like violating someone's free will. And it's like, it's not even attractive because it's like, don't you want someone to be like, want to pursue you, not because you tried to manipulate the universe to have it that way. It's like, <coughs> but we need to get 
clearer on what we want. So dream about that. Dream about what that would feel like and get in that feeling state, right? And then turn around and be a good partner to yourself. Be consistent with yourself. Put invest in yourself. Be um, kind to yourself. Show up for yourself. Like be the things that you hope someone would be for you. And model that to yourself. Be consistent in your relationship with yourself. Keep promises to yourself, right? If you want to eat a certain way, if you want to start cooking more, if you want to take more walks or spend more time reading or, you know, to pick up good habits, get better sleep, like keep these promises to yourself. I, you know, I want to work on this project and, you know, get this goal and like follow up and do those things. <coughs> keep your boundaries, you know, build trust for yourself. You know, do take positive actions for you because you love you and you're building that relationship with self. Connect with source, right? Learn how to fill your cup without relying on others around you. Now, in a very negative aspect, this flirt and seven of cups, it's like be wary of always getting caught up in the fantasy Stop thinking, you know, in terms of like wanting to entertain every option and thinking that the grass is always greener because it's not. In fact, there are even people now who have studied this and they're like looking at the odds and they're like, this is like, you're going to get a sense of the average like sampling of people in your life by a certain age. <coughs> And there's not going to be like gobs of like marvelous, like <laughs> magical individuals that are just going to come pouring in and they only get fewer and further between. So it's like at some point you're just like, okay, it's like you have to understand that you choose a person and you grow together and you continue to choose that. And it's not like <coughs> <coughs> you're going to have to work at maintaining, you know, uh, the honeymoon phase doesn't last forever. And so you're going to have to work on maintaining the different aspects of your relationship, the attraction, the interest, you know, the friendship, the bond, the intimacy. Um, so, yeah, you have to work on keeping all that up. And so if you're in flirtatious fantasy daydreaming mode all the time in a dark sense, that can cause you to, you know, never like be a wanderer and be noncommittal and elusive. So, you know, fill up. This energy can be very healthy and productive, but it can also be very dangerous and seductive and addictive. Also not getting caught up and seduced by someone's potential, not even our own, because that can be very seductive as well. It's like we need to be realistic about what is in the now, what is being presented, what is real, right? What's tangible? What actions are we taking towards this potential us, right? To unveil and reveal this potential, you know? What is that person doing to reveal their self in this moment? Not what could they be down the road. That's not fair to them either. You're not liking them for who they truly are. You're liking a projection of your expectation of what they could be. So <coughs> again, being realistic, but also being um, hopeful and <coughs> getting clear on your vision um, in a playful way and then doing something productive with it. Don't spend time, you know, don't get lost forever in the dream state and then chasing that elusive like perfection, right? A lot of it is uh, recognizing like these, this individual when they cross your path and then making that commitment because even if that right person crosses your path at some point, you everybody does the wobble and they're like, oh, is this the person that I'm gonna choose to hack it out with? Because the, they'll, their novelty will wear off eventually, you know, too. Um, I mean, even, you know, like in the show Outlander, even at some point, like Claire and Jamie calm down a little bit. <laughs> They're just like, you know, Fraser's Ridge, dipping candles, you know. Um, but yeah, so the inner work, cut cord cutting, purge, cleanse, take a bubble bath. Uh, I will attach this really helpful video I just watched um, in this past week or so, last couple of weeks, and I'm going to probably rewatch it again, maybe even tonight, but um, it's with an interview with Mel Robbins and Ty Skipson, and they are um, sort of unpacking the main attachment styles 
and the core wounds associated with those that would cause those attachment styles and then um, kind of what you can do to start counteracting it. And they also created a free meditation that helps you reprogram your attachment style um, if you do it for 21 days. Uh, so I'm not gonna include that, like you can find it if you watch that video. But that's a free option to try to work on your subconscious if you don't wanna do to be magnetic. All right, y'all. And then, oh, one more thing on to be magnetic. If you wanna check them out, they have a podcast called Expanded. So if you look at their, if you go to one of their process episodes, you'll get more insight into like what the work is like and how it helps. And someone will tell their story of like what they did and how they manifested what they did through the work. But uh, yeah, I think that's all. Thank you all so much. Please like, share, comment, do anything you can to take an action on this video if you've enjoyed it or if you come back often. Um, when I have like a bunch of likes on the videos, my reach goes so much further. So it really, really helps. Um, it tends to be something that people who view my shorts, they're big likers. Um, they are very prone to liking, but people don't like when they're watching the long form videos as much. And I know I've got a bunch of return viewers. So what do y'all keep doing? Coming back and back and back and not liking these videos. <laughs> so don't be doing that. That's not equal exchange. So throw me a like if you've been watching and help me out because it gets these messages to other people who need them as well. All right, y'all. Ciao.